The state's beleaguered Children, Youth and Families Department is facing a new challenge over how it should be run. One Democratic lawmaker is pushing to remove the governor's authority to pick CYFD's leader. News 13's Natalie Wattis spoke to the state senator behind the idea. The department has reached point which, which I think is, I would call, a, a, a downward spiral, almost a death spiral. Its reputation is so bad that professionally trained workers aren't willing to work for it, which le lends itself to a further deterioration in the reputation and the public's perception of the department. While Senator Ortiz Pino laments the backsliding of the Children, Youth and Families Department since federal oversight of it ended in 2004. As soon as the federal monitoring was lifted, caseloads started getting bit bigger. They stopped hiring professionally trained social workers. The number of kids entering care started going up again. He has an idea to get the often criticized department back on track a Senate joint resolution to change the state's constitution and take CYFD out of the governor's cabinet and create a three-person commission that would oversee it instead of a cabinet secretary. The governor would appoint one, the Senate pro tem would appoint one, the speaker of the house would appoint one. Each commissioner eventually serving six-year terms. They would be the ones who set the policy direction for the department. They would do that in public hearings instead of behind closed doors in a cabinet meeting where nobody knows exactly what went on, when nobody can hold them accountable. The commissioners would then hire an executive director. Ortiz Pino says this would help create consistency in the department. Even in the last two years, we've had three secretaries. Well, you can't expect the department to be able to progress with that kind of constant churning of the leadership. As well as depoliticize it and change public perception so they can get more trained professionals working there. This should not be interpreted in any way as a criticism or an indictment of a failure on the part of the current administration. They're doing the best they can with, with the situation that they've inherited. Natalie Wattis, KRQE News 13. The senator says he believes they can get this amendment through this session. The governor cannot veto constitutional amendments. If it passes, it would go to voters this November.